tonight's tactical enhancement is Singer. Tonight we're playing Black Seas. 770 odd points because one of us finally got over his ass and rigged up a third frigate. Meanwhile, Andrew's fleet, he has rigged up a third rate. So the first rate around here somewhere, but I don't have enough points to ship the field against it. And we're going for straight up Giffo because it's hot as hell and I can't be asked trying to figure out a campaign right now. So we've rolled up the, um, which one is this? The Pitched Battle or whatever it's called? I think that's roughly what it's called. Well, you know, the, the, the same thing that you get in every game we just have at each other oh, with. This one's called a Pitched Sea Battle. Oh, Pitched Sea Battle. <laughs> that makes sense. Of course it is, a Pitched Black Sea Battle. Um, land, on that note, the rules go, you deploy first, everyone sets up a battle sails. And then what we have to do is take lots of photographs of our ships. <laughs> and then what we have to do is roll on the wind gauge. Okay, so on a 1 to 3 it comes from the west, on a 4 to 6 it comes from the east. Unfortunately this table is aligned, that's the west and that's the east. So hog and see where it comes from. Uh. And because of the way our fleets are angled, one of us is going to benefit immensely. It comes from the west, which is... Woohoo! Yeah, I've got the fleet, baby. I'm upwind of these bad boys. I, tell <laughs> I was arguing earlier that you should determine it in advance and nobody gets an unfair advantage. Now, I have the unfair advantage, so that'll do nicely. Thank you. Uh, we will check in probably the end of turn one. Right, end of turn one, uh, there's no change in wind direction because we've got to roll, not because that's what we rolled. And I did a bit of a maneuver and finding out what it's like to try and maneuver in line when you're trying to take a corner. <laughs> We've done a lot of that before. It looks beautiful. Oh, it looks pretty, yes. This is a very elegant looking game. Uh, no shots were out of range. We moved first, then the British moved up and got two ships in long range. The first ship took two points off of uh, Mighty Leech uh, Frigate. Then the third rate opened up and missed completely, which is very convenient because that thing's got 50% more heavy cannon. So that was it. Now we'll roll. We'll try to remember this time that we're, that we're rolling for wind direction. Uh, do you want to roll, please, Andrew? It's 26, isn't it? Two six. When we look on the chart, this is six. Probably almost certainly no change in direction. Wow. Yeah. So I think uh, we'll go into turn two, and we'll check in at the end of that, or we'll interrupt play if anything particularly spectacular happens. So I'll just interrupt turn two briefly. I, I moved all my ships first because all my ships are upwind, and what a fucking mess. I've got to learn how to fly, uh, how to sail a fleet. I've lost most of my squadron formations. Sail through one of the lines. <laughs> there are skill tests for that guy not to crash into this guy before he veered off that way to avoid the collision. Ah, uh, we did take a fucking chunk of points off of that chap there with a, with a rather large number of dice. <clears throat> but that was about it. Uh, my, my sailing skills apparently still require some work. End of turn two. Now... I commented a moment ago how badly I fucked up my sailing. This really is a game where the primary skill set is how to keep your ships in the right place. Uh, and we got some rounds off on that fellow. Uh, then these ships moved up and the lead two blasted the living bejesus out of my... No, the first one blasted the living bejesus out of one of my bricks and it sunk outright. The second ship, the third rate, fired off a bunch of shots. Fortunately, just outside of 10 inches, and we argued over that a little no, bit. He, he fired at the brick. Oh, he fired at the brick. And he fired at him. And he fired at him. Okay. So the last one got some rounds over here, and he did two points of damage. Yes, the brick, the brick very unsurprisingly evaporated under the fire of the third rate at point blank range. That's nasty. Yeah. And that was actually a bad dice roll. It was. I wasn't expecting a lot out of that brick, but the only reason he was there is so I can't sail for shit, and he had to duck and dodge all these other things. And anyway, he could then get a round out 
was by getting up up to there. So that wasn't great. It, it does suggest though that as my fleet comes on through here, we're going to get rounds out, but then we're going to be massively outgunned in return. So that'll be interesting. Uh, the good news is Andrew's uh, two brigs are massively out of position. Massively out of position and being attacked by I don't know a tyranny or something on the roof there. Um, Very large seagull. Yes. So that uh, that was turn two. Um, Andrew seems to be in better form. Although he's really only going in a straight line. Pretty hard to fuck that up. Yeah, turning. I think trying to turn a line has become an educative experience. Anyway, we'll check in at the end of turn three. Right, I'm just uh, filming halfway through the turn this time because my fleet goes entirely before Andrew's. It's more like wind. Uh, we did have a change in weather dial. Wind is now blowing this away, which again works reasonably well for me. Uh, I've been chipping away, I'm knocking points off at the back ship, points off at the front ship, but nothing decisive, missing quite a few shots. But we do tend to do that until things get up close and personal. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose a frigate next turn. Uh, that aside, I'm just um, marking sunken ships with the wake marker from the ship and a smoke column just to keep track in the game of uh, where everything dies because that's always entertaining. And we'll now push on with the remainder of turn three. Right, so it's the end of turn three, and you know, you'd think we would have learned something about sailing by now. Uh, but we're always greedy to get the shot. Now, Andrew, um, he's broken formation with his lines all over the joint. Got a few long range shots over here, took a few points off of that brig. This, these two ships here, Andrew got point blank shots on my frigate, and he's crippled it. It's also on fire. Um, the funny thing is, in order to do it, he's had to break his formation. And he's had to put himself in a position where he's going to collide into his own ship if he you know, misses a couple of four plus dice rolls. Uh, and he's also parked himself right in position for me to cross the T and shoot at him across his snout. So we'll see. We're, we're not demonstrating patience in this game. And I've got a sneaker suspicion that this is a game that rewards patience. It's probably why it goes for 15 turns. Anyway, on that note, because there's no way we're getting through 15 turns tonight, we'll crack on into turn four. Right, so I'm interrupting turn, what is this, three, four, what the hell we're in, um, because I just crossed the T on that fellow, oh, on the sail pass, and that's what I fucking rolled, uh, that's glorious, alright, um, we better get on with the game. Ah, uh, right, now it's a busy turn. These guys shot one of the frigates up the duff and set it on fire. That one sailed away, put out the fire on special orders, and is okay, which is good because he's only a couple of points away from being crippled. Um, the rest of these guys were putting rounds into that. These little brigs got some long range shots out, hit nothing. Now, over here is Comprehend. I had a frigate cross the T on this fellow, blast the living bejesus out of it with a whole bunch of. 26 points. 26 points, yeah. Pretty good. Uh, that's now struck the colours. That said, this ship here, which is mine, has struck the colours. And the ship that inflicted the grievous damage on this guy had it done back to him by the third rate that sailed on past his bum, unloaded with everything, and did 56 points off the date of a frigate. That's factoring in point blank range and then dumbling the damage. It sank it outright. That ship was pristine, actually, it was in good nick. 36 points. I was a 36 hull points and now it's about no it was it's, it's not my, there's a bit of driftwood there. Uh, so I've lost three ships. I've lost a, a frigate. I've lost a another frigate. So one struck the colours, one sunk and the, the other one sunk. And I'm pretty sure that it was this third rate that's accounted for both of the outright kills. Uh, Andrew in return has got one that struck the colours, one that's hanging on, but I've got nothing in range of it. And these guys are probably untouched, I think. Untouched, yep. Yeah. yeah, okay. And I've got a bunch of uh, ships. Actually, a really good order, that fleet over there. But they're a long way away from anything. So we'll now go into next turn and mm, check in after that. 
Okay, right, well, whatever turn it is, we've got to stop because it's, uh, it's late. Um, we spent as much time arguing about rules as we have actually shooting each other. <laughs> now, the, st the state of play is we've got a third rate that's in pristine condition. We've got a fifth rate, this is Andrew's fleet, which is repairing itself after just taking huge amounts of damage. It's barely points. hanging on. Oh, six. I nearly got it down to crippled, but the bastard got away and started nailing himself back together. We've got a couple of brigs, one of which is on fire, apparently. Didn't roll for that. Um, and it had quarter deck damage as well, so it um, couldn't steer or anything. Alright, well, you see, it's so late we can't even hit the fucking table. The one dice. One and my fleet over here is in pretty good nick. He scrapped a bit of damage. Oh. So oh, this this burning chuck just took another three points of damage. Um, right, so my fleet over there is in good order and can circle around and still fight. Andrew's lost one ship. I've lost three. Now I, I have to lose four ships in order to be defeated. Andrew has to lose three ships in order to be defeated. And unfortunately, the ones which I smacked around and done some decent damage to are in position to run away. So, while well, technically nobody wins, Andrew's managed to belt me harder than I've belted him in this battle, which is about as close as we can get to figuring out the result. Still a draw, and let's face it, the third rate did all the fucking damage anyway. It did, that thing's a monster. Although, some of the damage it did, it did by charging in, risking collisions, doing crazy things. <laughs> yes, I shouldn't have done um, the, the ship you lost, you lost as a result of that. The ships I lost, I lost as a result of doing that. Yeah, we both fucked each other over with our, with our shots. Yes, we, sometimes when you've only got a limited amount of time to play a game, you do all the crazy ass dumb shit to just to force shit to happen. Well, I think the, the main reason why you lost those two fifth rates is because they were isolated over here. Yeah. And the rest of your fleet was over here. Yep. And all my firepower was right there. That's right, your concentration is fire. Yeah. I mean, the only part of your fleet that was isolated was two brigs, and he gives a shit about that. And the main reason this happened is because I fucked up my manoeuvring in turn two. I ended up with my fleet scattered instead yeah. of maybe doing lines. Yeah, I think you should have kept all your fifth rates in one, one squadron. I, I did start that way. Yeah. But something went wrong with the manoeuvre. I can't remember what it was, so we'll have to look at the video and, and see. But. Yeah. Um, yeah, that loss of formation broke my concentration of fire. Yeah. And I think if I had maintained that, I would have smashed at least one more of your ships. Yeah, that would have been game on for sure. Yeah, it would have been much closer. We both would have been one ship away from uh, outright loss. Yeah. But as it is, um, look, there's a few lessons learned. We've got to read the rules more carefully. We're playing about six different fucking systems at the moment, so it's a bit hard to keep them all front of mind. But if, well, look, normally at this point I ask, what have we learned? Third rate, uh, just you can see why they were ships of the line. That would be amazing. Oh, absolutely belt the shit out of fifth rates. Um, it'll be great when we, yeah, we see a few more third rates on the table. Just yeah, blasting the absolute crap out because they can take a ton of damage. Because I've got three third rates because I've got a starter box, yeah. that's the same. Yeah, um, I've got far too many brigs because uh, I've got the starter box plus a fleet box, that's a lot of brigs. Yeah, it's about 12 or something, I think. Yeah. Um, so I've really got to master the art of formation fighting with Briggs in order to maximise my fleets. Yeah, Briggs work each one in squadrons. Yeah, I mean, look, when uh, this, this lot came around here, they all fired, all four of their ships fired at the date of this ship. At the extreme long range. At extreme range, I was firing 16 to 18 inches away. But you only need a few ones out of the, uh, how many did I roll? Two, four, six, eight dice? One you got at least two. A couple, well, statistically, that's improbable, but. Yeah, very improbable. Yeah. Um, so, so you need. Like well, actually, no, um, yeah, and there, there are uh, a bunch of three or less. So you've got eight dice needing three or less, you're going to get a few rounds on the clack of a ship, and that's double damage. So, yeah, the, the, you're thinking about what? 20, 240 points worth of ships and three bricks with six heavy dice. Plus the frigate. Yeah, yeah, true, but I'm, I'm just thinking in terms of squadrons. That's, yeah, that's the huge one, actually. Squadron of three brigs is... 240. 240 points and six heavy dice. 
Okay. That'll give you a light third rate. Which is? Um, you've got a few less hull points than a heavy third yeah. rate. Uh, okay. But I think it's still got the same amount of fire, it just doesn't have the hit points. Right. So, so what would you rather have, three brigs or a third rate? Well, it's interesting because if you start piling on criticals of the third rate, and suddenly you've got the, the one ships and the eggs in one basket, whereas yeah. you can shed brigs and the remaining ones yeah. keep on with the job. Yeah, I have done a, a trial game of just brigs up against the first rate, and the first rate eventually died. All right. Well, this this may influence my tactics just based on what I can actually make out of my box sets. But that said, I've got two first rates, three, uh, three third rates, and then however many of the uh, fifth rates. So. Nah, get the big boys out. Third rates, the first rates. Yeah, well, I've got to rig up two more brigs, and that's the starter box done. We'll touch up the paint because we always seem to rub the paint off the gun barrels when we're rigging. Yes. Uh, so that'll be the starter box done, and then I'll be on to those uh, third rates. Yeah. Still, great game. Lots of fun. Lots oh, of fires. It was hilarious. Um, lots of ships blowing up. <laughs> we, we set fire to what? One, two, three ships? Three, four? Oh, at least three ships. At least three ships fire. burning. Um, some of them managed to put out their fires, but not before they struck the colours. Some narrow, narrow avoidance of the collisions. <laughs> this is looking a lot like television these, these, these bricks are like little race cars. They are. They go, I, I do like them around. because they hoon around. You know, they can manoeuvre. Um, get. They, they stay in the fight even when they're half a table away. Not a fan of myself. I'd, I'd rather have a third rate. Uh, look, I'm sure I will come to agree with you when I actually have third rates. Yeah, and you just roll that big handful of dice at close range. It's fucking brilliant. Yeah. At, at the moment, I'm just hoping that bricks are a good idea because I've got 12 little bastards. I'm going to have to rig them all. <sighs> you could do a pirate fleet a few, few months ago, I suppose. I could. I mean, I've got some of my... Sh the, the ships I've painted up so far are painted up in generic colours. Yeah. Um, I put Spanish flags on them, but... You can take them off here or change or paint over them or whatever. Yeah, well, they can pretend to be Spanish until they get close and they're <laughs> you. Um, and the rest I'm going to paint up in Spanish colours with the black and red. So, yeah, I could use these guys as the pirates. Yeah. At any rate, that's that. I hope you enjoyed our bit of silliness. Um, feel free to hit like, subscribe, uh, comment on any rules we got horribly wrong. Uh, on that note, time to call it a night. <laughs>